Hello and welcome. <laughs> so today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to rig a model that you've created. For this, I've just kind of created a simple little bee. He kind of blocky, but that's okay. Um, so first off, what we want to do is come over here to edit and preferences. You want to make sure that you're in like your add-ons and we're going to type in rig and come down here and check the rigify option. What this does is instead of just giving you single bones to work with, if you happen to have a humanoid or an animal, it'll have rigs and bones that have already been kind of set up for those. So next up, while in object mode, we're going to go to add armature and it so with the rigify these are the new stuff that you can get to choose from as well as hello uh the basic stuff before all it would give you is the human meta rig and single bone i'm not even sure if it gives you the meta hold on we're gonna check that okay so it just gives you single bones to work with without the rigify so having that is super important um anyway <laughs> so we're gonna go to armature if you have a human you can use the human meta rig or they've also got um the human meta rig as well under the basic um for what i'm going to do honestly i think i might use mm, you know no i'm just going to do a single bones for this so whenever you choose single bone it gives you one little bone to start with and this bone is essential because it's kind of basically where the start of your pivot point is going to be um, i'm going to go ahead and click the x-ray options that way i can see through my mesh um, and so you really you want to put the bone right about where you want your pivot point to be like where you want your character creature model to like bend the most so like on a human that's roughly where the waist is at on animals it's normally the back hips of them so with that you just kind of gotta use your best judgment with what you think and so for me what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of create the the spine of my bee and so we're gonna just rotate it ah thanks rotate it so uh another thing on your bones they have a head and a tail the head is like where it will attach like it it's where it'll attach to like the tail of another one if i were to do this this bone here whoa let's go into pose mode this bone here controls everything that this other bone does whenever we go to Put our bones together we want to be mindful of what do we want to control the other bone yeah so i'm going to put my first bone probably about here because i also want it to control the wings and the front and the back we'll just make sure that this is properly centered because as centered as you can get is what we want so now you want to just you would want to create the spine of your creature character model whatever it is so oh yeah to add more bones you would click on the first one right or you click on whatever bone you want to add more to and you extrude Oop, i had to click my bad so we're going to take it extrude it this is just going to be mm, Actually, no, this is going to be part of the spine. Okay, there we go. And then this will be for the head. And then we'll take these bad boys. And I think what I'm going to do is do like this. Bring it down. And then the same for the other side. All right. And so, yeah, well, once you notice that, like, it's not lining up properly you want to you want to make sure that it's basically inside of your mesh
And so normally you would want to make sure that they're pretty symmetrical. Because if they're like the the less symmetrical your bones are, it's just it makes it a little bit more difficult to deal with. But in my case, I'm having to go through this pretty fast. But anyway, um, so if we were to go into pose mode, make sure that these work how I want them to. They should, anyway, um, that it's not centered. Okay. And then for the antennas, So, oh, lovely. <laughs> you don't have to really worry about like, oh, our quick and a jerk. Um, like if we were to go into this mode, like you can see the bone through your mesh. Um, for that, don't really worry about it because whenever you go to animate and put it into your full thing, it won't show up, which is very nice. For some that have, like, let's say, you know, you've got more of a, a more four-legged creature than what I've got here. And, like, you've got, like, very, like, defined shoulders and thighs and stuff. What you can do is, let's say we don't want this leg to be completely attached to the ribs, right? Like, we're going to kind of cheat it a little bit. Um, What we're going to want to do is clear the parent and then disconnect the bone and so what this does is it says hey we're still technically attached to the point here which was the parent before but now what we can do is if we were to go into pose mode um we can move this bone around without it doing anything like we have more mobility of this leg now so like if the shoulder needs to move more or something it gives you a little bit more uh, movement than here where you're kind of just attached to the spine. Um, I think I am actually going to do that on all of my legs because I kind of like that. So yeah, so we would go to parent and then clear and then disconnect bone. And then from there, move your disconnected bone where you want it to go. And then, of course, you'll have to go through and fix up everywhere else. So that way it's still in line with where it needs to be. Oh, and make sure to save. Save, save, save. So for these bones here, I am noticing that they're not, like, connecting to the rest. Um, so, you know, you've got bones like this. That technically they should be parented to something, but they're not. What you would want to do is um, choose the child and then choose the parent of it. Go to parent and then make, but then keep offset. So I'm going to go ahead and finish this off I think one thing that I forgot to mention yes okay so here's where it's at if you go to uh, your object data it'll look like a little running guy on the right um, you can choose what to display as so I like the octahedral which is like these weird sort of triangular prism shapes but not really they're like pyramids almost. Um, but you've got stick, which some people like. I am not as big of a fan because it's kind of hard to see where the break in the bones are. But again, some people like them and they're pretty minimalistic. You've also got B bones, which are like block bones. Um, you've got envelope or envelope. I'm pretty sure it's envelope. But they're spherical, but also 
cylindrical. It's kind of strange. I've not really looked at this one before. I kind of like it though. And then finally we have wire, which is kind of like the stick, except for the stick shows more of like where, like there's little dots for uh, where each like bone is disconnected from, whereas wire is just straight line. Um, so for this, I'm going to stay with the octahedral. So yeah, once you have your mesh looking like how, you, or once you have your bones in the places where you want them to kind of, you know, be the structure of how your mesh will move, what we're going to do is you click your mesh first, and then we're going to shift click our bones, and then right click, come down to parent, and then choose armature deform with automatic weights and so what this will do depending on your mesh whenever you go now to pose and move stuff it'll move your mesh with it and that looks pretty bad whenever you go to move it but we can fix that um if you find that something just doesn't quite move how you're wanting it to move like, for instance, that you're not really wanting this to deform, like, the back here, right? Like, you're just wanting it to move with this little bit. I probably should have done a more complex mesh. Um, <laughs> so derpy. Um, but what we can do is go into object mode. We're going to select the armature first, and then shift select our mesh and we're going to go to weight paint. So then what this does is it allows us to choose how much that each bone controls of the bee's mesh or of your mesh. So red means that like that's that's like the max. Like those vertices will follow the bone 100% no matter where it goes. Ah we can make him super long. <laughs> anyway, um, to select different bones, we want to hold control and then click on the bone that you want. You can also, I believe, yeah, you can shift click if you want to select multiple bones. But in this case, I would suggest just to do one bone at a time. Because if we do more than one, then it's it gets a little messy. And so let's say, so for this leg, right, we don't... We don't want it to necessarily control the vertices that are up here. We just want it to control part more of the upper leg. Um, in this case, we would take away some of the weight paint. And to do that, you would want to right click and it'll give this little menu. Um, I am in a more recent version of Blender, so I'm not sure if uh, Blender 2.8 will do this. I think I'm in 2.9. but Whenever you right click, it'll bring up this menu. If this menu does not show up, uh, come over here to like the screwdriver and the wrench, and those same settings are over in the tab group. So one, whenever you have the weight set to one, that means that everywhere that you paint will turn it more red, right? So like if I were to paint over, hello, if I were to paint over on like the vertices, right, it would start to turn them red as you went over them. What that does is increase how much um, dictation that the bone has over those areas. Um, th this is one of the reasons why having a little bit more vertices and polys on your mesh will help you out because then like if we were to go to weight one me trying to get rid of these vertices here since there's really only like four it's going to have some issues and look bad <laughs> so in my case i'm probably not going to be able to just because i don't have a whole bunch of vertices to select from however if you had a ton what you could do is come over and just paint all of these areas where you did not want um this bone or whatever bone you have selected to control. Let's say that I didn't want it to go quite as far. You know, we could just like say, nah, you don't control anything now. Only Oop, there was some on the inside. Um, 
you don't control anything. The only thing that this bone now controls is the lower leg. And so that's kind of what's happening with the above bone is like it technically doesn't control anything but the leg that it's attached to. But because these bones have control over vertices groups, um, moving this leg here will still control vertices because it's controlling the bones that it's attached to. And then we have the radius, which is like the radius of the brush. How much do you want to, how, how much do you want to, you know, collect in one click? And then we have strength. And so the strength, what it does is, um, let's say that we don't want this to necessarily take everything, but like let's let's say that we just don't want this bone to be as strong with the vertices that it's got its rain over. Uh, what we could do is you turn down the radius, or you turn down the strength. My bad. Turn down the strength of it, and like you can just click and drag, or you can um click just once and then type in you know the value that you want. And what we would do, make sure that weight is set to zero for this. Whenever you go to click brings that strength down but not super super far like how setting strength to one would do oh yeah color correspondences um blue dark blue means that uh the bone has no control over that area so like you know i'm moving this around it's not moving around the head here or the butt or the wings right like it's just moving where it has other color um red super red like this is like you know those vertices follow it all the way and then there is a gradient of how much control this bone has elsewhere so like if i were to paint just a little oop, if i were to paint a little bit here right and move this bone around it moves that vertice over there but not like super far if that were to be red that vertice would try to snap right onto the bone and sometimes we don't want that yeah once you have your bones painted out how you want and modified how you like we can go back into pose mode and from there you can mess around and experiment with what you want it to look like you butt <laughs> and also oops. I will have to change some of that later. It's fine for now. <laughs> now that you've got your mesh rigged, you are ready for animating it. Thank you so much for watching my video. I hope that you guys enjoyed. And please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.